Well, I had to buy a different kind of wood. So you want to make some screen prints, wait. So you want to make some screen prints, but you don't know where you start and you don't want to spend $50 per screen and you want to just be able to make your own. Let me show you. You want to just be able to uh, make your own. Yeah, I do it in my garage. I do it as a hobby. I don't really do it to make money or anything. Well, make money is the goal, but I do it to launch my own brand. So, I mean, and it works amazing. Yeah, see my other cars right there. No one's outside. I made my own press and everything. So I'm gonna show you how to make them for about 20 bucks total. You can make, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven, seven screens or so. You just gotta buy some of the mesh online, some of this mesh. I mean, I got the, I'll put the link, I'll put the link below. I actually got that information from uh, Kenyon Ken, I wanna say is his, uh, is another YouTuber making you know videos on screen printing and everything. I wanna say his name is Kenyon Ken or just Kenyon, I don't remember. But uh, I'll put the link below and uh, let's go to the stores. I totally came to the store at the wrong time. It's 6.22 and well, it's fucking, excuse my language. It's traffic time. In Vegas, that's where I'm at. I'm in Vegas. All right, so the wood I need is in there, and they have it closed off. But let's see if they have it anywhere else. Let's go look for it. The wood that I need is actually these right here, and it looks like they're out. Yep, they're out. Those are not the ones, those are a little too thick. Let's see if we can find something a little bit smaller. Well, I had to buy a different kind of wood. It's still the same size and everything, but it was a little bit more expensive than I thought. Normally they're about 98 cents to a dollar ten each. These were two dollars and sixty cents. Trying to keep everything on a low cost, so that's why I'm trying to get everything low. But just so I can show you, we'll go with this one though. So let's go. It's the only thing that sucks about having a car and not having a truck. But as long as it gets the job done, I actually gotta push the wood all the way through. So let's go home, let's get these things built. I'm gonna show you how to get everything going on a low cost. All right, so I had to change. Now we're back. This is the emulsion that I'm using. Is the uh, Speedlight or Speedball, not Speedlight. Wow, Speedball, you know, Diazo emulsion. Uh, so far, this one's made uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so far it's made uh, this one little jar, which is uh, the 6.6 .6 ounces, has made six screens i mean they're not all the same size but you know it's made pretty pretty decent amount of screens uh if you put it in the fridge it actually does last longer so like i was saying i'm in my garage doing everything for for the screen printing stuff but this is the wood that i'm going to be using obviously i'm going to be cutting it down now the measurements that i use so that you can get this size of screen so you can get this size of screen um is going to be this is a 15 by 20, and obviously, it, you know, two 15s, two 20s, and then you know, you just use it. This I screw it in myself so that I can so it holds in. I also put some wood glue on there so it definitely stays and it doesn't go anywhere. One thing I do like to put also is that I, when I do go around, I do like to use a little bit of gorilla glue. Um, where is it? It's right here. You know, a little bit of gorilla glue so that I can. So it'll hold better. And then the wood glue that I'm using is actually also Gorilla Glue. So go figure, not a paid advertisement or anything. So it's Gorilla Glue, you know, not a paid, not being paid by Speedball, anybody, Home Depot. But this is what so far has given me the best results for everything. And like I showed you, this is the Speedball. I'll show you the, the well, you saw the other one. But this is the one, this is basically the size that I use. 
and it works great for shirts from anywhere from small shirts all the way to uh, 3x I have done now with this one being said I am using a uh, plastisol paint I tried a uh, water-based paint I wasn't a big fan of it so I am using plastisol with plastisol itself um, the mesh that I'm using I want to say it's a 110 120 I'm gonna say it's a 120 mesh I'll put the link in the description common one that if you're a starter you can find it anywhere I got you can get it at Michaels you can get it at Amazon anywhere you want and I mean like I said everything you know I'm trying to keep everything on a budget this is my squeegee I literally paid I want to say like I paid like a dollar ten at Walmart for different sizes so but this is the one I use mainly for for bigger when there's more white or more ink to be put in so let's do a let me start cutting everything and we'll go from there all right so now that we got everything measured measure twice cut once so let me show you as you can see this is my two pieces of wood this one right here 15 15 so these two are my two 15 pieces and then from here to here would be 20 inches and then from here to here would be another 20 inches so those will be my two sides. So let me uh, get those two cutting and we'll see what comes out. Let's go from Well, as you can see, the battery on my saw was dying, so it was kind of cutting kind of janky and kind of weird. But we got them cut. I highly, highly recommend using an electric tool, cutting through these little things. Even though they're small, man, it, it just takes too long to just saw by hand. And I mean, doing it with an electric saw, it just takes you, as long as it has battery, it'll take you just a few seconds. But uh, so you should have three sets. So you should have this set which is the pile that you're not going to use because they're extra well at least I do because of the size you have four that are 20 inches and then you have four that are 15 inches each now what I like to do I like to take a little bit of uh, sandpaper and just sand the edges of this because I mean it's a little coarse and it's just you know once you're gonna start working with wood it's gonna start to you know you'll get splinters and plenty for experience I already got a few splinters working you know making these things so we'll go, we'll see what happens. Let's, let's check it out. So to start it off, what I'd like to do a little bit of wood here, or I mean a little bit of uh, wood glue here for us. And one very, very, very important key about getting glue, and what I notice about this one, is that you need something that is water resistant. Um, I don't know, this one doesn't say it, but I mean so far, I've watched, it, I've watched you know, the screens a few times and they have not come apart, so that's why you know that's why you need it to be water resistant because you do wash them if you use you know water base or just I mean any kind of ink you're gonna end up washing them so now what I'm doing here I'm just you know pre drilling it bringing it in just a little bit so that I can get it in now I don't tighten up all the way as you can see it's not all the way in why because it's only one screw so I mean it obviously pivots so once I have you know all four sides put together that's when I'll that's when I'll tighten everything back up so let's do uh, let's uh, let's get these other sides going so
There you go. There you have it. You know, your first screen. Let me get it in the camera. There you go. Your first screen right there. There you have it. It's all said and done. Now, the only thing we got to do is just, you know, add our mesh. Mesh that I'm using. You can literally, like I said, I bought it on Amazon. I'll put the link below. Uh, I bought this on Amazon. It's a 110 mesh. It's actually pretty stretchy. It's pretty cool. Um, the only thing that you're going to need is just a staple gun because we are going to staple them all the way around. Now, I myself, I actually have a manual one that I use. So what we're going to do first is we're actually going to staple all four corners. And then we're going to do one row of staples, one row of staples. And then we're going to tug this way, staple down, tug this way, staple down. So let's look at, see where we're going to start. Because this one's a little cut all funky, so I'm probably going to use this end. Now, one thing. With wood, you're going to have things like this. Okay? Now, what we want to do, because we obviously can't plug that, I mean, we don't want to, but we can if we want to. We're actually just going to put our screen on this side since since this other side is completely, you know, clear. There's no holes or anything. So let me let's get that started. Let me get that at it. We'll go start on this side. And you want to pull this a little bit tight over here not too tight where you're going to rip it but tight enough where there's some tension and we'll just drop a staple right here in the corner and then same thing over here we're going to pull on it it's not too tight but you know we don't want to rip it obviously because of the, there's only little staples so perfect now what i'm going to do is i'm going to staple all this across and i'm going to staple all this across and then once these two sides are done I'm going to grab the mesh, pull that way, staple down, grab the mesh, pull that way, and staple down. So let's get this going. Alright, so uh, as you can see, I put a few staples here in the corner. So it kind of links both of the pieces of wood together. Same thing on this side. So kind of keeps it a little bit together a little bit better so let's put another one on this side because I didn't get the whole piece of wood there you go now it's really not bad. so now let's staple this side all right so now these uh these two sides are done like I said what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull as tight as I can without ripping it Put a staple right by where my thumb is, and then work my way over, and then do it again, work my way that way. So, let me show you how it's done. So, we're gonna pull as hard as we can. So, well, as hard as we can without ripping it. And then we're gonna put a staple right there. Now, if you let go, it's probably gonna, you know, do a little bit of, it's gonna tear just a tiny little bit, but it's still gonna hold. And we're just gonna go all the way down, do the same thing. So. So now it's a little bit tighter here. So now let's finish it off and keep on pulling. Well, I just messed up. I swung the stapler around and I made a little hole. I don't know if you can see it right here. But luckily it's towards the edge and the emulsion will cover it. So this screen will probably not last as long, but. There you have it. Your screen's nice and done. You know, nice and tight. Now we just have to put the emulsion. Obviously, you gotta clean it. You know, you wanna make sure you degrease it at least. You know, get a good clean on there. Like I said, I actually like to put a bead of uh, uh, Gorilla Glue on there so it stays nice and you know, so it doesn't really move at all. So I'll get that done, and then uh, obviously camera magic. We'll have the emulsion up and ready once this is dry. do here is uh, I'm probably gonna put a bead of emulsion here and you know make it quite pretty hefty and then with a squeeze just squeeze it all the way down flip it around squeeze it down flip it around a few times 
you know, do that back and forth. So this way you don't have to buy anything else. But normally what you can do is you can just get a, uh, like a, like a scooper. Actually, I, I, I don't even know where mine is. A scooper. Um, it's a scooper on this, uh, you know, for, I'll, I'll put a picture on it. Here you go. And all you got to do is you just lay down one stroke up and that's it. Well, you know, one or two strokes, but I'm going to show you the hard way, but it's the cheap way. All right. Obviously this has to dry where there's no light. Uh, okay. It is a uh, photo sensitive. So what I have, I actually have a restroom or bathroom right outside, or right inside here. Uh, it's fully dark and what I did, have a fan on going on. We also have the main fan going. That's just a bunch of trash. And I literally just park it like that. And I try not to have the fan hit it directly. Turn the light off. Keep it on now. Make sure nobody opens the door. And then I usually put a towel down there to kind of get more light, you know where it doesn't leak through so so as you can see it's nice and dark I mean this is my living room and it's pretty dark but it keeps it nice and dark and safe so let's do the other one set a timer for about an hour maybe two hours and we'll go from there <clears throat> actually with that one uh, with with the drying of the emulsion personally I would recommend it you know letting it dry for at least six to 12 hours for this kind is the best one but really after an hour and a half and something like that where i have the main extractor on and i have a fan in there and we're between an hour to two hours is actually going to work it's still going to work um it's not going to be wet luckily it's not going to be wet to where you'll mess it up but <clears throat> at the same time you know the more you let it there sit there the more you let it dry and then uh once i get it going i'll show you how to burn the screen as well all right, so now I'm going to set everything up so I can burn my screens. Um, I'm still going to be using my little table here next to my gear. But obviously, I need to turn that off. I need to come in here with no light. has to be completely dark. Once I turn the light on, um, I'll tell you exactly what I have, how long or how high from a stand to where the table is, um, exactly how everything's going to go. So once I hit it with the light and everything is it's lit so I can explain everything, I'll explain to you. But for now, I actually do have to turn off the lights and obviously because there's no lights, I can't be recording. So hang on tight, I'll be, give it a few minutes. So this is the light that I'm using. It's just a basically light bulb on a reflector. All right. And then generate a good piece of wood to my light stand because the actual bolt is busted. And it's literally one of my light stands for my for my studio, the same table. And then I laid a piece of glass on top so it keeps it nice and smooth. But this is basically my koi fish. Obviously, you want to you want to burn it onto this you know the side that's gonna be in the bottom. So this way when you flip, and obviously you gotta make sure it's backwards. This way when you flip it, you actually get the right screen. And when you're pushing down, that's where you're gonna have all the, the ink come through. Um, with that emulsion, the one that I have, um, with this one, if you get it now here to here to the actual screen is, uh, I have it at, I want to say anywhere between 12 and 15 inches all the way there. And I'm going to set it for 30 minutes. Once I have it set for 30 minutes, I come, I'm going to take the glass off, take this, the stencil out, take it outside. Um, what you got to do is just, you know, do a light mist of water, flip it around, do another light mist of water, let the water sink. And then that's when you give it a little bit of a, a harder, uh, of a harder spray so it can take out all the emulsion. Uh, all right. So it's been about 30 minutes since I set that up. Now we got to take it off. You got to take the glass off. Got to go rinse it. See how it is. Just so you know, the, uh, the screens on the emulsion have been drying for about five hours. I've left them in the uh, in the bathroom that I have with the fan running and the extractor going at the same time. It's only two screens. Normally they would be, like I said, it would be done about in an hour or so, but you know, I'm, while this one's going, I actually left the other one in there for the same reason, because I don't want to lift anything and then have any of my stencils stick to the emulsion, which it does happen if your emulsion's still wet. 
I've seen it happen. Luckily, it has not happened to me. Knock on wood. But uh, if that happens, it means your emulsion was still too dry. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this outside into the with the garden hose. We're gonna hit it with the water. Hopefully, 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 just the right parts come off and nothing else comes off. So far, um, everything that I, all the other screens that I have, this has been the exact same time that I've been using and everything's come out great. But you know, there's always that one time. So um, let's give it a shot, let's see what happens. Let's take the piece of glass off. Uh, we'll put that right here. I'll come back. That's the other design we're making. And we lift this up, which is our stencil. Look at that. Looks pretty decent. You see the line that I was talking about? I know I'm gonna get it up there. There it is, you see it? So I gotta fix that with just a little bit of emulsion and some, some tape. And then, perfect, so everything, everything looks good. So now we're just gonna go spray it. So this is what I'm gonna do. Let that go for about 30 seconds. Flip it. Let that water sink. So, obviously because it's water emulsion, so it'll rinse out. Now, we'll hit it with the hard water, so we can get all that stuff cleaned out. So, uh, let me get my water hose. This is the water hose to fan, and then we're gonna spray it. So it actually came out pretty good. You know that area over here that I thought it was gonna be messed up? It actually did not mess up or anything. Everything's nice and clear. Obviously, except for my 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 marks. Marks right there. Sorry, I have my garage open, so. And like I said, that right there, I actually have to fix. Well, I just have to get a little bit of emulsion and you know put it right into those into the grooves where I don't want. You know ink to go through but other than that this is gonna get taped up this is gonna get taped up same thing down here taped up so that those lines don't bother me but I mean look at that I mean uh, it's pretty clear there's no other light other than what we needed to to come through so let's uh, maybe we'll do a test right now so let's do the other one all right so the adhesives in just wanted to make sure that when I bring it down perfect it's uh, I need it as centered as possible. So we just gotta pull this a little bit over. Always be checking, make sure there's no wrinkles. On the some of you guys call this the lint liquor, but it's a lint roller, whatever you want to call it. Here goes nothing, let's check it out. Let's fix this. Let's uh, get ink all the way across. I'm gonna ink it a few times because I wanna make sure I get a, for sure, inked all the way down. So here we go. extra step I like to do is push back out so you get any extra ink that's not supposed to be there. So this 
where your, your marks don't get clogged or anything. So let's see how that came out. Perfect, so it came out pretty good, obviously, because I need to run it a few times, a little bit here on the, uh, on the F. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flash it with a little bit of heat. With the heat gun, I'm gonna run it for about 20 seconds, bring this back down, and hit it one more time. Whenever you're using the heat gun to get this process going, um, you can pick one of these up at like Harbor Freight for like $10, $12. Um, all you gotta do is just, you know, go back and forth, heat it back and forth, heat it back and forth. You don't wanna keep it in one area because one is gonna get too hot and you're gonna end up either burning your shirt or messing up the plastic hole. So let's run a second shot. Let's see how this goes. Sorry, I was having a little bit of issues there with the F, as you saw, but I got it cleaned out. It was just, a, there was a little bit of extra ink that I didn't get the first time, so that why, that's why it was giving me a harder time. But now that's the second coat. We're gonna do it one more time, because I like my whites to be very white and popping, but uh, you only have to do it once or twice. You saw the first time was pretty decent, as long as you put enough pressure. But I like myself, like I said, I like to make sure it's popping, I wanna make sure it's there, and I wanna make sure you see it. So let's hit it one more time. Just like that, the shirt is done. So now, obviously, one more time, I gotta heat it to make sure it stays. Put it on the side so it stays, uh, so it keeps on cooling down. Thank you.